Hello and welcome back. So in the next couple modules, we're going to take a look at a JavaScript framework for dynamic web pages. Your HTML will move away from having so much content already filled in and become more like a template for displaying content we will pull from a service. Using a framework like AngularJS removes a lot of the code that you would otherwise have to write and simplifies your page dramatically. The AngularJS framework implements a common pattern for code design called MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller. Models will be created to hold data for display. Views are the way the data is presented. Controllers are what manage the interaction of the views and data. While we won't cover the design pattern much here, much of the code that we will create will follow the MVC naming approach. So let's go ahead and let's get started. As in our other modules, I'm going to get started by opening up Visual Studio Code. In this case, I already have it open, and as you see, it automatically brings up the last file I was working on, and this was our app.js file, so this is fine. And I still have access to my index.html and my app.css file that I was working with before. So as we've seen in earlier modules, we're going to add a reference to a content delivery version of the AngularJS libraries. Alternatively, these can be downloaded to your computer and stored in your script folder. So let's go ahead and let's copy the line of code that's in the exercise file. And we're going to paste it right above our app.js. And again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to close my file explorer so you can see how it looks. So you'll see this is the line that we pasted in, and it's in the exercise file, and we pasted it after the reference to jQuery and before the reference to app.js. So I'll go ahead and I'll save that file. Next, we need to modify our existing app.js file to create a new AngularJS module. We're going to call this Angular app, but you can call it whatever you want. So we're going to go ahead and add the following code to the top of app.js. So let me go ahead and open up my app js file and again I'm copying and pasting the code from the exercise file and I'm putting it right at the top of the page now that we have an angular JS module we need to put a directive in our HTML that tells where the module can be used this is also called the application scope so I'm going to switch back over well first I'm going to save the file and then I'm going to switch back over to my index file and if I scroll down to my body tag, again, I'm going to copy the code right from the exercise file. And let's put that right here. And the code is here, ng-app equals angular app. And now what this is doing, just so we can explain what's going on here, we created that AngularJS module that we're going to add some code to shortly, and we're just telling the body that when it loads, we're going to reference this module, and we're going to be calling functions and methods from this module. So again, I'll save this. Now, to keep the current time code functional, we will need to add some code to make that happen. Since this is the main page, let's add a new JavaScript file for the AngularJS code on this page. We'll use a standard naming and call it maincontroller.js. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll go back to my file explorer and I'm going to add a new file and let's call it main maincontroller.js. I'm going to hit enter. And then again, once it creates the file, let's copy and paste the code that's in the exercise file. And let's save that in here. Back on the index.html page, we need to make a few more modifications to the content. So let's go back there. Again, I'll close this. First, in the head tag, we need to add a reference to our main controller.js file, the file we just created. The page is not going to even know to use the file unless we reference it somehow. So we're going to add a reference to it right after app.js. And you can either copy and paste the code from the exercise file. In this case, I'm going to copy and paste the line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the code, the app.js right here with main controller.js. Okay, so now we've saved that. 
Next, let's add a div around all of the content on the page and specify that it will be controlled by the main controller we just created. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'll scroll down here and right above the header and directly after the body tag, I'm gonna put div ng dash controller equals main controller. And then I'm gonna to go to the very bottom of the page and then I'm going to close the div off here. And then as usual, I'm gonna highlight everything in between and I'm gonna indent it once. Now, again, let me just explain what's going on here. I know we're going a little quickly through this because we just want to give you the, the core concepts. And then once you've done this, you can go and explore how powerful AngularJS is. What we did is we created an Angular app module. Okay, and that module is located in our app.js. And then what we're doing is that inside that module lives the controller called main controller. Okay. And really what we've done on the page is we've told index.html, okay, the body is going to use this module and then this div is going to be use all the functions inside of main controller. So inside this div, we can only use functions that we're going to be creating inside of main controller. So finally, after we add that div, we need to change the footer to remove the ID from the P tag. So let's scroll down to our footer. And you see here we have PID equals timestamp. We're gonna remove that completely and use an Angular JS expression to get that timestamp. So let's get rid of the ID. Okay, and inside of here, we're just gonna put it's a open curly braces, open curly braces, timestamp. And then let's close those. And this is an Angular JS expression right here. This is how you know that you're working in Angular. So you have the open the two open curly braces your object, and then your two closing curly braces. And again, this is one of the things that makes Angular kind of easy to work with because you can put these pieces throughout your code and then reference them in your controller and do stuff with them. So let's save all my files. And I can do file, save all. And let's load the index page in our browser. So I'm gonna browse to that. I'll go to choose to code. Let's open up the page here. Notice how your markup no longer has to define an ID so that our code can replace the timestamp. By simply using the scope property in the markup, it is more clear what the intent of this section of markup will do. This simplicity is part of what makes frameworks like AngularJS so popular. Before we move on, let's go ahead and clean up the app.js code since the code to insert the timestamp isn't called anymore. Good developers should always remove code that is no longer called to keep the needed code clutter free. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna go to app.js and the new code should be just this, get API badge. And you know, while I'm in here, I'm going to delete my comments because we don't need those anymore. So again, my new onload function is just get API badge. So before we go any further, let's talk a little bit about file and folder structure. All of the code files you create can be created right next to your HTML files and your image files. However, this can get messy very quickly and it can be difficult to find your files when we need them. So if I show my file explorer here, you'll see I have everything, you know, I have my app.cs, my app.js, my index.html, and my main controller, they're all in the same folder and I just really have the images um, in, in its own folder. So typical web projects structure the files that are similar in their own folders like the following. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna make an additional folder for scripts and move the app.js and main controller.js to that folder. Additionally, we're gonna make a folder called content and move the app.cs file there. Once we're done doing that, we need to make sure to update the code in our index.html page to notify it of the new locations. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we can easily do this in Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna make a new folder called scripts and I'm simply going to click app.js and drag it to scripts. I'm gonna click main controller and I'm gonna drag it to scripts. 
And then again, I'm gonna make a new folder. Whoops, not inside of there. I'm gonna click back on index. And then I'm gonna make a new folder called content. And I'm gonna drag my app.cs to content. Now, most importantly, we need to go back to our index.html. I'm gonna scroll to the top. And what I'll do here is let me close the Explorer so we have more room. And if you see here, here's the reference to app.cs or app.css. So we have to put content in front of there because it's now 